Welcome all, trustees, faculty and staff, faculty emeriti, trustees emeriti, alumni, families, friends, and most important, members of the graduating class of 2018. Thank you all for being here today. There is not an ugly thing about this class. That I know. Someone will have to tell me after graduation the reference. And no cigars yet, please, until after you get your diplomas. Thank you. Let us please start by acknowledging with gratitude the adults in the Andover community. And thank you for the wonderful comments over the last several days and those two great speeches on this score. As we all know, Andover thrives as a direct result of individual and collective diligence, support, and love. We all know we don't get it right as adults every time. That's true. But to all the adults who select our students in the admissions process, who care for our students every day, who teach and help them all the way along, and love them at every stage, thank you. Please join me in a great big round of applause to the faculty, the staff, and the faculty emeriti of Phillips Academy. Thank you. I promise you there's a lot of love there going in both directions. To the parents and grandparents, to the guardians and friends, you too deserve our warm thanks. Thank you for agreeing with the student in your life that heading off to Andover was a sacrifice worth making. I know for many of you it is indeed a great sacrifice to part with your children so early, for so many days out of the year, whether as boarding or as day students. For this gift of time you have our enduring thanks. These students have grown, perhaps in some cases beyond recognition. They have worked very hard, and they are now ready, in most cases extremely ready, for the next chapter in their lives, as it should be. We thank you for making this possible education for these terrific young people possible. Students and faculty, I'd like to have a round of applause for all the parents, grandparents, and guardians who made this possible. We are truly in your debt, and you know who you are, as you're being told by your graduates right now. And to the class of 2018, congratulations and thank you. Yes, you can cheer. It's true. You can. Eastland and Sam, you have had no easy task. Not this morning, not this year. Your leadership has been essential this year in ways that are spoken and unspoken. Thank you also for the ways in which you have led your class and this school with distinction and for your compelling words this morning. We're all in your debt. Eastland and Sam, thank you. In class, before I share a few concluding remarks with you, we have one bit of business to attend to, you and I. We're all aware that we are not a complete class today. Our year began in tragedy. And while today is your day to celebrate all that you have accomplished, it is also fitting and proper that we take a moment to acknowledge one who's not with us today. I hope you'll join me in a moment of silence in remembrance of Daniel Nakajima. Thank you. Perhaps it is because I trained as a lawyer, but I like to think of this address as my closing argument. It is the last of many times I get the true privilege to stand before you and make Andover's case. It begins with your revisit days, when with your parents we talk together about why an Andover education might make sense for you. It extends through all school meetings, 
and our exploration of Andover's founding values. You know what they are, but I say them one more time. Non Sibi, Youth from Every Quarter, Phoenicia Riganai Pendit, Knowledge and Goodness, and the Big Issues of Our Time. And it comes together here in a final address. Whether you've been here for one year or two, three years or four, I trust it is plain what we've been seeking to impart to you through your Andover education. In essence, that is knowledge and goodness. The knowledge part is relatively straightforward. You've all done that extremely well or you wouldn't be here today. You all signed up for a rigorous academic experience and you've succeeded in surpassing our graduation requirements. Well done. Along the way, you've made beautiful music and art, put on compelling productions, you've won some athletic championships, you've lost some athletic championships. It's okay, I have too. You've made lifelong friends, you've fallen in and out of love. You've done all the essential work of growing up. Well done for that too. These things all matter. This year, as you know, we've cleared out much of the library, including the archives, in order that we might renovate the Oliver Wendell Holmes Library. And yes, contrary to certain rumors and recently posted YouTube videos, most of those books and papers are in fact going back into the library when it reopens. Thank you, Charlie. In the course of removing the books, our team had the chance to examine many of them, and we found wonderful things. One was a book from the library of Samuel Phillips himself from around the time of the school's founding. This book is entitled A Treatise on Self-Knowledge by John Mason. As all historians know, and you're now all historians since you met our graduation requirement, it's a thrill to learn about what historical characters read and learned themselves as we seek to understand the past. This treatise on self-knowledge is instructive. One line from it helps me with this speech this morning. As Sam Phil likely read, quote, know thyself is one of the most useful and comprehensive precepts in the whole moral system. And it's well known in how great esteem it was held by the ancients and how high esteem the duty of self-examination as necessary to it, end quote. As part of your job while you've been at Andover has been self-examination. Put that together with the other half of the knowledge and goodness function. What does it mean for us to have taught you goodness? Put a better way, what does it mean for you to have learned goodness? As you self-examine yourself on this pivotal day, your high school commencement, what do you see? When Andover was founded in the throes of the American Revolution, the answer to that question was actually pretty easy. Our founders told the faculty, initially just a teacher, to teach the Christian gospel. That was goodness. Perhaps to borrow a little more from Andover Night Live, it was God's plan. <laughs> and I don't mean in the Drake sense. For many of us here assembled, it is still today the same thing. In a school with today's youth from every quarter, though, the question of what goodness really means is a bit more complicated. I'm through roasting you, Charlie. <laughs> For my part, I think of goodness as having three components. To be a good person, living a good life in a good society. Start with the idea of being a good person. What sets Andover apart? It is certainly our need-blind admissions, rigor and excellence in academics and all our endeavors, and the wonderful community of people gathered in a beautiful place. But most of all, most essentially, it's a set of values that we explore and we share. You might not agree with me on each aspect of these values, and that's okay. We know what the values are, and they ground us as part of Andover. I think it is these values that help define what it means to be a good person. In the senior survey, you may not know this, but I sometimes slide in an extra question, as I did this year, we asked you to think about what it means to be a good person. These responses gave me a great deal of hope for the future. Now there are 330 of you, all of whom are making to graduation, which is awesome. Two of you gave snarky responses, which is fine, you're adolescents after all, and it was the senior survey. But 328 of you gave really thoughtful answers to this. <laughs> Some of you talked about goodness in terms that should by now be very familiar, and actually I do read them all, truly. Nansibi, one of you said, is what comes first to mind. I genuinely feel happy helping others. Another student wrote, it means doing your best to uphold values that you find true and that you admire in others. A third wrote, the meaning is very simple, and that is just being kind to anybody, no matter who it is, and also being supportive of people that mean the most to you. This discussion of what it means to be a good person extends all the way back through the school's history. Phoebe McKean, as you may know, served as longtime assistant principal of Abbott Academy. A large building on the Abbott campus bears her name. McKean was also a fine writer. In one book, she described a notable Andover graduate, Joseph Hardy Neesom, of her era. 
Nisima came to the United States from Japan in the 19th century to seek what he called, quote, a good education. Nisima found his good education at Phillips Academy. As a student, Ms. McQueen wrote, Nisima had, quote, no superior in intellect. His mind has an indomitable propensity for diving to the bottom. In other words, he had that knowledge part down. Just as important, Ms. McKean told the story of this student because of his goodness, at once innate and learned. She described with care, quote, his modesty and simplicity, and the fact that those who got to know him best treated him with, quote, the utmost respect and affection. It is traits like these that we have come to see and admire in each of you as you've grappled with what it means to be good. We've seen you support one another on very hard days this year, as well as joyful, bright spring mornings. Thank you, class of 2018, for all the good things, the many acts of non sibi you have done while you've been here. You are already good people. I know that from firsthand experience. As for the good life, that of course means many things to many different people, and I joined Sam in not telling you how to lead the rest of your life. But one way to see this challenge is through the lens of how you focus your time and energy from here on out. If there's something that you'd like to see changed or preserved in this world, I hope you will spend your time and lead your life in such a way as to make it so. If you become a successful investment banker or CEO or lawyer, as some of you will, I hope that along the way you will create many great jobs. You'll become a wonderful fine arts photographer, a philanthropist, an excellent board member, a terrific parent, and a great friend. If you're elected to high public office, not far-fetched given that Andover graduates today serve as the congressman from this very district, the leading candidate for the next district over, as head of the FBI and last two of the last five United States presidents, I hope you will act with grace and dignity, with courage and thoughtfulness, with humility and kindness. As I mentioned in our final all school meeting of the year, I hope that a few of you, at least a few, will choose to spend your lives teaching. When the time comes, I am confident there will be openings in buildings very close by from where we sit now that you might fill. Dorms to live in, classrooms to teach in, Eastland meals to serve, and fields to coast on. The teaching profession needs Andover graduates, as all professions do. Returning to our graduate, Mr. Nisima, one of the reasons that Ms. McKean chose to chronicle his story is that Nisima believed that the world could be improved through education. Nisima returned from the United States to Japan to create a university to be able to offer what he believed was, quote, a good education to the people of his home country. Doshisha University is today one of the great learning institutions of the world. You may have passed a statue commemorating this connection in the grassy courtyard framed by Sykes Wellness Center, Bullfinch Hall, Schumann Admission Center, and Salem Street. Finally, as for a good society, it does not come about on its own. I don't believe, as some have stated, that the arc of history necessarily bends toward justice. I wish it did. But it takes people making deliberate decisions and acting according to values to make it so. A good society comes about through good people leading good lives with a broad public purpose in mind. During your time at Andover, we've heard from many alumni who have helped to build a good or a better society. In November of your lower year, we presented Marvin Minsky, class of 1945, with the Andover Alumni Award of Distinction. After getting a bachelor's in math and PhD in mathematics, he built the first neural network simulator in 1951. A prestigious career at MIT followed, in which Minsky has been credited with one of being one of the inventors of artificial intelligence and founder of the MIT Media Lab. Mr. Minsky returned to campus, attended several math classes, and after all school meeting in the chapel, his true passion emerged. Well into his 80s, if you happen to be hanging around the chapel at that time, Mr. Minsky took to the Steinway piano on the dais and played brilliantly for 15 minutes. We heard from Ai Jen Pu, class of 1992, when she received the Fees Award in 2016. Ms. Pu is a national labor organizer and leader of a social movement demanding that federal and state labor laws and protections be expanded to include the domestic worker workforce, the workforce, quote, that makes all other work possible. During her all-school meeting address, Ms. Pu said, we've been taught this powerful myth our whole lives that we just got to get it together, go it alone, pull us up by our bootstraps, who told the PA community. But the truth is, she said, once we're born, we're part of an incredible web of human interdependence. I think you've learned that here at Andover. And those who watched the Golden Globes this year may have seen Ms. Pooh on the arm of Meryl Streep as her date this year. Finally, Ted Sizer, our 12th head of school, spoke of this idea of good people creating a good society when he said, quote, good character, 
can well be extended in our minds to include greater purposefulness, a more affirmative commitment to democratic ideals, and higher standards of personal performance. And many of you in the senior survey agreed with Mr. Sizer. For instance, one of you told us, being a good person to me means giving back to the community, whether it be the immediate local community or the world, as much as possible. To the class of 2018, I rest my case. I know that you will make this world a better place by who you'll become in the years that follow today and by what you will contribute to this world, all the while informed by what you've learned and experienced here at Andover. Finis Aregane Bendit. To the grandparents, guardians, parents, and friends, on behalf of the faculty, staff, and trustees of Andover, I present to you the great, truly great class of 2018, tested by high academic challenge, engaged by their larger community, touched by tragedy, connected to one another across differences of manifold kinds, and learned in the great end and real business of living. Congratulations and Godspeed. Thank you.